Learning the arteries of the abdomen can seem daunting at first. Not to worry. I'm going to walk you through the three main trunks that branch off the abdominal aorta, the celiac trunk, the superior mesenteric artery, and the inferior mesenteric artery. I'll also draw their branching patterns and go over the organs these vessels supply. Then we'll tie it all together into one complete picture. I'll talk about the intertruncal and intratruncal anastomoses so you can better understand how the body keeps the tissues perfused with blood if there's a blockage. By the end of this video, you'll be able to draw these trunks and branches, which will make your life much easier when you try to identify these vessels in the cadaver dissection. Okay, are you ready to draw? Let's do this! Okay, so we're going to start with the celiac trunk. So here's a celiac trunk branching off the abdominal aorta. It has three main branches. One, the splenic artery. The second, the left gastric artery. And then the third is the common hepatic artery. Now this common hepatic artery is going to branch into the proper hepatic artery and the gastroduodenal artery. Now going back up here to the proper hepatic artery, we're going to have the left hepatic artery branching from it, the right hepatic artery, and branching off the right hepatic artery, we'll have the cystic artery, which goes to the gallbladder, and back down here, we'll have the right gastric artery. And this right gastric artery will loop around in anastomose with the left gastric artery in the lesser curvature of the stomach. Now, down here to the gastroduodenal artery, we've got a supraduodenal artery, which will go to the superior part of the duodenum. We will have the right gastroepiploic artery as a continuation of the gastroduodenal artery. Now this right gastroepiploic artery will anastomose with the left gastroepiploic artery, which comes from the splenic artery. And both of these blood vessels will run along the greater curvature of the stomach. Now branching off of gastroduodenal, we also have the anterior and posterior superior pancreaticoduodenal arteries. Okay, so here's the posterior one, and this one would be the anterior one. Now they'll anastomose with the inferior pancreaticoduodenal arteries. So now we can talk about anastomoses. We'll have this right gastric artery anastomosing with the left gastric artery. This is an intratruncal anastomosis. The left gastroepiploic artery and right gastroepiploic artery will also anastomose. And these superior pancreaticoduodenal arteries will anastomose with the inferior pancreaticoduodenal arteries, which come from the superior mesenteric artery. All right, so superior mesenteric artery is up next, and the superior mesenteric artery is going to swoop down, kind of like so. Here we're going to have the ileocolic artery, branching over to supply the ilium and the cecum. So this will be ileocolic, IC. Right. Here we're going to have the right colic artery, and this right colic artery is going to supply the ascending colon, and it will anastomose here with the ileocolic. So this is right colic. And then we've got middle colic right here. And middle colic is going to supply blood to the transverse colon. So MC for middle colic. Up here, we're going to have our inferior pancreaticoduodenal arteries. There's going to be an anterior and a posterior. The dotted line represents posterior. These will anastomose with their superior pancreaticoduodenal counterparts. All right, so here I'll continue to draw the anastomosis for the middle colic and right colic arteries. 
and they'll help to contribute to that marginal artery that goes around the inside of the colon. Here we've got the appendicular artery, and here we've got the jejunal branches and the ileal branches, which would supply blood to the small intestines. So now I'm drawing the inferior mesenteric artery. Okay. So this inferior mesenteric artery will have its share of branches. This branch right here, which is going to be the left colic artery, is going to supply blood to the descending colon, left colic. Now this left colic artery will anastomose with the middle colic artery. Remember that blood vessel that supplied blood to the transverse colon. And down here we have the sigmoid branches, which will supply blood to the sigmoid colon. And here we have the superior rectal arteries. So here I'm drawing the colon so you can see what parts of the colon are supplied by what arteries. So here we've got the iliocolic artery supplying this part, the right colic artery supplying this part, middle colic, left colic, sigmoid branches, and superior rectal arteries. So now we're going to tie this all together and draw the celiac trunk on this picture here so we can see where all these blood vessels go. This right here is one of the branches off the celiac trunk known as the splenic artery going over to the spleen. Here's where left gastric artery is going to run in the lesser curvature of the stomach. Okay, so this is left gastric. And then remember the third branch off the celiac trunk is the common hepatic artery. Now this common hepatic artery is going to branch into two branches. One's going to go superior. That one is the proper hepatic artery. And then down here we're going to have the gastroduodenal artery. Okay. So back up here we've got the branches off the proper hepatic which would be left and right hepatic arteries going to the liver. We're also going to have a right gastric artery, which I didn't draw here. I did draw the cystic artery, which goes to the gallbladder. Okay. Here we've got the supraduodenal artery going to the superior portion of the duodenum. So here I'm drawing the right gastroepiploic artery which is a continuation of gastroduodenal. So right gastroepiploic, it runs along the greater curvature of the stomach, and so does the left gastroepiploic, which branches off the splenic artery. Okay, so this is left gastroepiploic. Now we can also draw the superior pancreaticoduodenal arteries. There's a posterior one and an anterior one. And we're going to see that they will anastomose with branches from the superior mesenteric artery. Okay. These are superior pancreaticoduodenal arteries, both anterior and posterior. Okay. Now we're going to start drawing the superior mesenteric artery. Okay. So the SMA is right here, and this SMA is going to travel downward. supplying blood to the small intestines in the first portion of the large intestine. Okay. So we'll draw these superior branches up here which are actually inferior pancreaticoduodenal arteries. And again we'll have an anterior version and a posterior version. Okay, here's the posterior version I'm drawing here and this will anastomose with the posterior superior pancreaticoduodenal. Again, these are inferior pancreaticoduodenals branching off of the superior mesenteric artery. 
This branch right here is going to bring blood to the transverse colon, and of course this is the middle colic artery, MC. This one right here is the right colic artery, RC. And you can see how this will anastomose with the middle colic artery. On this side, it'll anastomose with the iliocolic artery, which is this artery right here. Okay, The iliocolic will supply blood to the ilium and the cecum. Okay. And there's a loop that forms here, and off of the loop we're going to have the jejunal branches, the ileal branches, and we'll even have this appendicular artery. Here are the jejunal branches, and here are the ileal branches. Now, inferior mesenteric artery, we can draw down here. And this inferior mesenteric artery is going to loop around and travel with the colon. Off of the inferior mesenteric artery, we're going to have this left colic artery, which will anastomose with the middle colic artery. Okay, so this right here again is the left colic artery. Here we'll have our sigmoid branches supplying blood to the sigmoid colon, and there'll be a little anastomosis here as well. Okay, so these are sigmoid branches, SB. And then here we have the superior rectal arteries. And those superior rectal arteries will anastomose with the middle rectal arteries, which I'll draw here. Middle rectal, MR. And finally, an indication of where the marginal artery would be. Remember, the marginal artery is made up by the union of the iliocolic, right colic, middle colic, and left colic arteries. And it's located around the inside of the colon. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.